Hello and welcome to the biggest announcement that we have ever made. Sunday, September 4th, downtown Emporia at the Granada Theater for the final round of Worlds. We are going to record commentary live. Help me out, you guys. I, I thought you were going to... Final round of the World Championships. We're doing the thing live with a studio audience. So these tickets, you're going to have to go to jomezpronextdaylive.com to get these tickets, to get all the information. But at this event, Paul, tell them what they're going to get. Exclusive merch, a meet and greet opportunity, us, and maybe a special guest. Special guests including Mike Tyson. The inventor of Skittles. Alf might be there. Very fake James Bond. <laughs> Very fake James Bond. <laughs> We reached out to Randy Moss. His people came back with a polite no, but he did get back Randy to us. Randy Moss. Just, can you imagine? Actually, I know. Guest Randy Moss. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't be in Emporia, don't worry. We're going to find a way to let you join in on the action, no matter where you are in the world. This is not just us recording commentary. We are going to have a DJ set from Starframe. We're going to be signing autographs. We're going to have merchandise. This is going to be the world premiere of the last round of the world championships, 12 hours before the rest of the world gets to see it. We all know disc golf is best watched in a post-produced format, but post-produced commentary is best seen live. We'll see you there. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> I cannot wait for that. Well, hello and welcome everyone to round one front nine coverage of the 2022 True Bank Des Moines Challenge presented by Discraft. I'm Jeremy Colling, joined by Paul Uliberry, and we are Big Berry Commentary. And I just found out tonight something very cool. If you cannot make it to Emporia to watch mm. our thing, you can stream next day live at home, and you're going to get a very unique experience that you're not going to see in post produce. So check that out. Look into that. If you can't make it to Emporia, join us one way or another. It's going to be truly special in my opinion. I agree. And we have something special going on right now. A very unique set of circumstances is happening here in Des Moines with yeah. the first round. We had inclement weather yeah. that allowed us to, or forced us to postpone action about halfway through the action of the day. But we'll get to that because we are actually playing first round on Saturday. We've got Gannon Burr, hometown hero, Calvin Heinberg, every town hero. Just just heroing. Just heroing everywhere he goes, just consistently top three everywhere. And we've got Kale Levisca. He has won this tournament multiple times. My hero. He's everyone's hero. This is truly heroic. Kale Levisca's. Cashing Street coming to an end at the beginning of the year, but him and Nate had that battle for years and years. Truly consistent. And this is a player who's been very consistent lately as well. Brody Smith. We're going to see him on Jomez. I don't know the last time that happened. Was it Waco last year? Or no, actually, earlier this year at a uh, GBO. A DDO. DDO, yes. Yeah, changed the name. So, we are playing this round starting 8.30 a.m., 8.15, earlier. I don't even... It's super early. Right. The weather has brought in some inclement wind. Maybe a little drizzles. I don't even know. I a couple drizzles, yeah. I wasn't awake. This I was early. out there. I felt it. It was drizzling. Hole one is a par four, 795 feet, but it's going to be into a pretty brisk headwind if I remember the weather correctly. Actually, it looks like it's kind of calm right now. The morning started off pretty calm. By the middle of the round, it started getting pretty heavy. Like I said. Heavy with the wind. Wasn't quite a wake yet, but we got Kale LaVisca up first. Big hyzer off the tee. OB right the whole way. And I think that's going to be just fine. Next on the pad, out of Safety Harbor, Florida, please welcome Calvin Heinberg. Calvin's going to go zoomy zoomies with this destroyer really far. And look at Calvin with a long sleeve shirt on. It, it was chilly. Mid-August. Yeah, you don't see that too much on tour. We usually are in the hot zones. 
that drive landed in the hot zone. That is a boomer. Next up, out of Urbandale, Iowa, give it up for Gannon Bird. I've been playing this course since I think 2016 probably. Pretty much ever since I started playing, I've been playing this course. And I mean, I have a ton of great memories at this course. The community here is amazing, and I feel like I'm gonna get some pretty big cheers when I, they announce my name, and that's just gonna be the best feeling ever. That's really the best part about, you know, being in Iowa, I feel like, is everybody loves this golf so much, and the community's so strong, and, you know, everybody just wants the best for me, and, you know, the courses and all the other players here in Iowa. I definitely want to get an Elite Series win, and I've been close a couple times, even, you know, last week at Ledgestone, I had a chance to win. I was, you know, in the hunt all four rounds, and that, you know, that's a good feeling to have. Like, if there's one good chance I have to win at an Elite Series event, it's going to be this weekend. Just knowing it's my home track, you know, being, you know, helping design in the course. You know, I know all the, you know, the lines to throw, and I know what's the most consistent play out here. I think if I just keep my confidence up and I can putt well, I, I have a pretty good shot at winning this event. Just got to start out hot and, you know, maintain that throughout all three rounds. I like his chances. Who wouldn't? Every um, weekend. Yeah, every weekend, but especially when you get back to your home state, home crowd, course that you helped design. You know, he's going to be feeling very comfortable out there. Maybe a little bit extra nerves that you're not used to playing with because of the yeah, expectations yeah, being a little bit higher. Dallas, Texas. Give a warm Iowa welcome to Brody Smith. <laughs> get that morning dew off the shoe before you rip in to hole one. Dude's explosive, Jeez, man. my gosh. He, he really is. Just doesn't really do much with the body. He gets the disc out there so far. There's a lot of power behind that hyzer. Very scary second shot from there. Kale, very conservative with the hyzer. Best case scenario playing the hyzer hyzer is maybe brushing the inside trees there by the pin and giving himself a C1 putt, but that's going to be back edge of C2. This is the preferred play into the green. A little short, but that'll do, especially with that kid's putting skills. And Calvin got left enough that he's going to try the playing the turnover. This is in danger of going out of bounds right, and I think it's going to, yeah, it's over that wall. It's going to be out of bounds in the spot where I don't think he's going to have a look for the par. This is a part of Brody's game that's come a long way in the last year. Big hyzer forehand into the green perfectly. The backhand, it didn't really seem to take him long to learn the, the mechanics, but the forehand took him a little bit longer. Now he's starting to really stretch that shot out. Yeah, you can still tell he's got a little bit of that ultimate, mm -hmm. you know, frisbee throw in that forehand, but able to get that nose down. He needed to get that nose down. That's a little bit high for Gannon. And let's see if you were right about Calvin over here with a tough look. And it really comes down to the spot the group gave him. They gave him a look, and... He is a little short, so did have an opportunity, but that's going to be an early starting bogey for Calvin and a nice birdie for Brody Smith to start the event. One of the nice things about this course here at Pickard Park is a good combination of woods and open, left moving shots, right moving shots. It really requires a very well-rounded game to score well. Hole two, par four, 753, down over, out of bounds the whole entire way. Out of bounds deep as well. You can see right there on the right-hand side of this flyover, it makes a left-hand turn up the hill through a little valley. Yeah, really great hole. I think it's just mm -hmm. a classic par four. Well, these two holes play right next to one another, and they are essentially played the same way, even though the hole's completely shaped differently. You're going big righty hyzer off the tee, and it sets up to a much better suited forehand approach. That's a big hyzer for Brody, right in the right, perfect spot there. I think that's perfect, or did he get stuck behind that tree there? Well, if he's going forehand, I think he'll be just fine. Okay. But yeah, if you're backhand, then this that's gonna be... is needs to go, I think. 
does not clear. So I'm not sure what happens with that. Is there a drop zone if they don't come back in bounds? Crickets. Yeah, I don't know. Gannon's pushed this one long. Heisering back late. That's exactly how you draw it up. Calvin once again going with a Heiser, but he's going the low play here. I like this play with speed because you can really get past the entire grouping of the trees, but you have to battle those low limbs, and he's just connected on enough of them that he's kind of in the same spot where Gannon and Brody are. This is not a good spot. Has to go air bounce underneath. I mean, that's pretty good from there, I yeah. feel like. He's probably looking at 375 from there with an impossibly low ceiling tight gap. I mean, the best you can do really is a, a bogey. This is going to have to be extremely overstable, and it is. Ooh, catches that little branch. Okay. Circle's edge. We've seen Gannon do that a lot, really force over some extreme angles with that Anheuser forehand. And this is the shot that really needs to get its feet on the ground, and it's going to be skipping down the hill. It's going to be an obstructed look. Edge of the circle. Brody with another good-looking forehand approach. Sit. And nice. a great start for Brody. Kale wisely lays that one up. It's going to be a bogey for Kale on hole two. I was going to say, it's just a matter of time before he nails one of those circle twos. And mm -hmm. That looked pretty easy. Uh-oh, this does not look easy. Just the hand in the disc is all you can see. <laughs> pretty obstructed. That's uh, It's like that on a few holes out here. The rough can be pretty, pretty green. Just like that, Brody, two under through two. Two holes you definitely want to give yourself looks at. Hole one playing a bit more difficult than hole two, but still getting those two to start off. Good way to start the day. All these guys are going to be playing two rounds this day on Saturday. They're playing this early morning round. They're getting a nice lunch break and then some, and then they're coming back late evening, nearing four to five o'clock for the second round tea time. As we play hole three here, very difficult new hole here at Pickard Park. Par three, basket is blind from the tee and there's out of bounds right behind it. First, you have to go down this narrow corridor, but you really have to avoid the last. I was hoping that shot would get through because there's about four or five trees that you can't see around the corner that are blocking really the shots that go down the middle. Too early. Very specific shot here. You don't really get away with getting lucky that often. I'm like, I'm. I almost feel like the only way to get through it is, is almost play it down the middle and then you kind of cross your fingers. Hmm. Let's see if Kale can do a little late flip. Negative. So zero for four on our group today, making the gap on three. And give you some pretty tricky spots. We don't see a lot of forehand shots from Kale, and he's just pitching up to the top of the hill. That'll be a fast 28-footer for the par. Yeah, even if you do pure it, sometimes you go out of bounds in the water. It's kind of unfair. There was one player who did not go in the water when a pure shot went through the woods, and that is Raven Newsom, who picked off the early Elite Series ace on hole three. He did it in practice as well. What? Apparently he's two for two. Back-to-back -back throws. Oh, my word. That's yeah. <laughs> incredible. I didn't hear that part. That's incredible. Wow. Just pitch-ups for Calvin and Gannon there. Kale can knock down this, and that's a great putt. Yeah, close to go... Uh... Going bogey, bogey, two and three. You don't want to do that. So that's 
I mean, it could be much worse than a bogey. If you miss that putt at all, that OB line is only three or four paces, maybe four or five paces behind the basket, but you're going straight down the hill, and that water's coming off the water a bit. I mean, that wind is coming off the water a bit. Yeah. That didn't make sense. That that water's coming off the hill into the wind. <laughs> That's scary. As we take a look at one of these signature holes here at Pickard, hole four is a par three, 472 foot downhill tee shot. A lot of fun. You have to make a decision. Am I going for the pin or am I going to play the safe layup left? Any OB shots go to a drop zone, which is at circles two, circle two's edge looking straight down at the basket, which is one of the scariest putts you can give a player. Brody's going high. See him lining it. Oh, geez, oh wow. that is very high. This has got to get that forward momentum. Otherwise, yeah, I think he might have it. He has it. It's a big, that's a big hyzer. <laughs> Whoa. Good shot, Brody. Gannon also goes high a little bit of turn. Can it swing enough at the end? Oh my gosh, yes it does. That's beautiful. 472 is a long clearance. Yeah, especially, but we do have a left or right to left kind of tail. Right okay. to left tail, so it is pushing everything. So that is the line to the right there. I do like this look for Calvin. This is going to okay. be high up the hill. Oh my gosh. Don't be naughty. That was inches away from being really unfortunate. Any OB does proceed to that drop zone, so it doesn't matter if you cross and bounds or not. Even Kale's getting a little cheeky kind of going at this, getting himself a look from C2. I like it, but uh, I don't think he's going to be running that. What do you think? I think he's conservative on on the putting green, but I, I think he's got a good enough angle that he might give it a little bit of a bid. We'll see. Get nope. in. <laughs> Get in, exactly. Three, three is a good score in this hole. What a start. What a putt. Wow. Brody with a nice little 32-footer right in the heart, too. Three for four to start. That's pretty dang good. So is that. Any birdies on this hole is freaking solid. Yeah, that's that's really good. I'm, I was just looking at the number of birdies on the prior hole that we just played. 320 feet, and there were only 15 birdies on the day. It's just incredible to think a hole that short wouldn't be birdied that much, whereas hole four, 478 feet, has 26 players. I mean, it's, anyways, on to hole five, Paul, show them what they got. Island hole, 330, you can see that line on the left, the water in front. You can go as far back there in the woods as you want, mm -hmm. which is probably the play. You're gonna see wide hyzers. This isn't yeah. wide enough. This has gotta get down quick. That's gotta get edge right now. And that's going to skip OB. That proceeds to the drop zone, which is about 75 feet or so. Yeah. Better. Really trusting the width. Late hyzer in. But did that roll down? OB, it did. That's, I really, that hyzer play surprises me for a player like Gannon who has a good forehand. Right. That's good trust. Very good trust there. Good pace. Slice right through the bush. Four backhands on hole five. I can't imagine too many cards are going four for four with a backhand. Kale just getting over that hill there. Anything close to the water has a pretty steep little slope back towards the water. And a lot of those shots will hit the hill and go back in, like we saw there with Gannon. Good little bid there for that was Brody. Also, good bid for Gannon. 
Okay, I went with the low wide hyzer, which is a lot more technical so than the high. Trust. Yeah, a lot of trust there, exactly. Had to, had to have been a fast disc as well, which can get away from you pretty easy. That was mm -hmm. pretty impressive. Are you going forehand on this one, or are you going backhand? Backhand. You are going backhand as well. Those woods at all, just I, when I see that type of shot and I see all the open space left, it just boggles my mind that anyone in the world wouldn't go forehand. But, I mean, that's how I look at a lot of disc golf anyway. So. Tough. I feel like I have to throw a sidearm really hard, whereas a backhand I can get a stable disc. I guess like, I just am surprised people aren't going straight at it with the backhand. They're right. all playing the wide hyzer, which is bringing that right set in. Anyways, on to hole six, par four, 633 feet. On the easier side of the par fours, just want to get one in bounds with a turnover, setting yourself up for a blind skip sidearm or backhand turnover. Who knows what we're, we're going to see with this card. Really like this whole technical tee shot. Mm -hmm. Especially for a backhand, you really have to get it over, especially if you're going fast like Calvin here. You have to rip it over. See, even though this looks turned over, it's this probably is gonna not. Be, this is going to either be perfect or there's OB no, left. There's no yeah, way. OB yeah. Left, yeah. It's so hard to turn it over enough. Like mm -hmm. you, you can try to throw it in the woods on the right, and it still doesn't happen. Kale's got this moving right the whole time. Better. Much, much better. But Sac short. Yeah, not really getting a ton of distance off the tee, but keeping himself in play. Which is tough because a backhand into this green is actually one of the harder shots to throw in disc golf. Yeah, low ceiling entry makes that backhand turnover, like you said, very, very difficult. This is smoked. It just needs to get left somehow. That is going to be an incredibly difficult second shot. Yeah. Might even have to think cut roller. This is Stanton. Did he get away with it? Not at the very end. And he's pretty far back as well. I'm thinking he's got nearly 315 feet to the pin. I think more probably, honestly, yeah. yeah. Because I was a little bit farther than that, and I, I, I got the corner tree mm -hmm. at, like, 310. Yeah, so, yeah, 330 or so. Either way, inside the circle, just enough to give himself a good look for the par. And you can see what Kale has to do with the angle of that disc just to give himself a look. And I don't know if that caught a tree in the gap or not, but either way, he's looking at a C2 look for the birdie. Yeah, this is one of the ones where you let it rip in practice, then you get pretty tight in the tournament where you're like, wait, yeah, do I go that far left? And it gets it gets tougher for sure. Risk reward is certainly there on this one just for the angle into the green. Like you saw, Calvin didn't have a very tough angle, but he was out of bounds, and Brody had just no shot at it, had to pitch out. That's why you need to get out of jail free card, man. <laughs> they sell those at Played Against Sports on the used rack. For three hundred dollars? No, not a chance. What? You can buy them for five ninety nine. Ninety nine ninety nine. Brody with a good approach that'll save his par. Kale over the top, and that needs to watch out. Actually, there are some pretty tricky little bushes back there that if you get into, your putts can be obstructed. Good par save. Calvin's short bid for the par is in. Brody will just walk by, tap in his par. No birds. No birds in this one. Oh. Like I said, you it there it doesn't take much distance to get in a weird spot. Kale able to knock that down, but as we're as these guys walk over to seven, I, I feel like it's actually worth noting at this point, these guys know that the group that they're playing in right now is the very same group they're going to be playing in later on in the afternoon. There's no afternoon mm. shuffle, which we are traditionally used to in our sport. So that's something that we don't really deal with that often as we look at the island hole, par three, 345 feet uphill, pretty generous size landing zone. Mm -hmm. But the wind can be doing something much different out there in the field than what you're feeling in here, protected by all the woods. What do you think? It plays 400 uphill? I'd say it's fair. 
Calvin going eagle. This is looking really nice. This is one of those holes where you're looking at it on camera and you're like, Psh, I can do that. But then you get here mm -hmm. and it's actually a lot farther and that island isn't that big, even though it looks gigantic. It does look really, really big. Yeah, I don't think, I think there's probably a large percentage of our viewers who are thinking, I don't think I can do that. And then they're also right. No, I'm just saying, like, the visual. Look oh, at that no way. Kale <laughs> can't believe it. Those are large, large logs there that do not normally allow a bounce over inbounds. My goodness. I'm saying the angle right here. Mm -hmm. And usually there's a crosswind, headwind. It makes it play tough. It certainly does. Brody, look at that throw. He is on fire on this front nine right now. Look at the difference in the shot shape for Brody and Calvin. Completely different angles. Nearly same exact result. Double kiss. Doink, doink. And once again, you just you can never truly appreciate as Gannon's got this one turned over, but not quite enough. And not getting in bounds. Slow mm. start for Gannon. You just can't appreciate the the nature of how uphill it is from the tee. Yeah. This time Gannon's putter does not save him. It's gonna be another bogey, even par for Gannon through seven holes. Meanwhile, we've got Calvin and Brody tapping in their birdies. And a boog for Gannon. Yeah, Gannon, a slow start. Yeah. That's tough. And there's so much excitement. I, I don't know. For you, you might play well in your hometown, Sholo, or back home in Arizona. But for me, I feel like when I play at home, there's so many more th factors going on in my head with just the familiarity of everything, and I don't know. It, I it play could... a dookie at home. <laughs> play like an absolute duke and nimer. <laughs> hole eight, par three, 580 feet downhill. Talk about a signature hole. This one yeah. is exactly that. You're going to see wide hyzers playing up towards that wooded line right there. Don't flip it because it's bad in there. There is a left hand out of bounds, too. This is too low and going into that oh. bad in there thing I was talking about. Yeah, you don't want to do the bad in there. That is where the wild things are. Oh, you just shut one eye for the aim. I like that. I think that's what... Shooters do? That's what <laughs> Chris, Chris Dickerson was doing when we did that robot video a couple years ago. He was just shooting lasers out of his one eye. Yeah. That was a good shot. A little higher, and that's perfect. Skipping all the way down the hill. Brody with four birds today with a bogey. That's pretty good. Yeah. The conditions are tough. It's early. And it's to be noted that there is a really hot round in already. Yeah. With Matteo shooting an 11 under. Finished his round on Friday. Yeah. And so everybody knows what the mark is. And then the conditions change, and it's really tough. This is going into that nowhere. Zone. Yeah, Gannon's got this pushed into the the never never land as well. That's not what he's looking for. It's it sometimes takes two shots to get out of there. And so, you know, that gives you a little anxiety when things don't go your way, then you start sure. pushing and it, Yeah, and you know what you're chasing as well. Mm -hmm. and you're not on that mark, so you're thinking, my goodness, what's going on? Calvin's trying to find some light through this tunnel here. There's a little tunnel-y light. Very good. Hearing that sound from the woods must have felt very nice for Calvin right there. He knew that was a difficult approach. Well, Gannon actually went forward and got mm. all the way to the front of that. That was good because if he kicks right or something. Turns that into a bit even. Brody's got this one. Not quite turned over enough. Looking like we're going to have three pars on hole eight. 580 foot approach reachable hole for the big arms. A 
all bars. I believe Paige and I will do whatever it takes. We have five world titles, but that's not where we want to settle. We don't want to settle with five. We want more. We would practice 24 hours a day if that's what it meant to win the world championship. You know, we're willing to do that. We're willing to sacrifice so much because we've already sacrificed so much, you know, to get the fifth. But we'll sacrifice more to get the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth. We have that same mindset, and, and we're just going to continue to, to push and push and push and push. Whole nine, it, it, just go on a ride with us as we ride up this hill. Literally, it takes nearly an elevator to get up this little slope right here. Par three, 290 feet, plays every bit of 360 feet. The play is to get straight and aim at this tree that you see in the background because you can see it from the tee, but that's all you can see. But I mean, if there was a hole that you couldn't appreciate unless you were there in person, it would be hole nine, I feel like. Yeah. Calvin appreciates it. So does the spotter and enthusiastic green as he's landing in the bullseye. Sometimes you'll see players tee off from farther back on the tee to give them a better angle. As this one's heading left, this is in danger of going out of bounds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a right to left crosswind. And that's pretty good. Needs to Whoa. get down here. That's where it gets close. But yeah, just puts the brakes on in time. You could see it really shoot over there to the mm -hmm. left side once it got on Heiser. Mid range, that's better. That's nearly perfect play coming up here for Gannon. No chance of doing anything else other than nestling pin high. So a bogey for Brody to finish the front nine. Hale high left, and you can really see that wind picking up now as the players are entering a pretty windy stretch of holes coming up here. 10, 11. Good birdie for Gannon to get him under par on the front. Chowing down on something. Probably that beef jerky. Double G beef jerky. Kraft beef jerky from Double G. I just tried the vegan stuff. It's very, very good, actually. Really? Very good. What does it taste like? Honestly, it kind of tastes like a pepperoni, which is weird because I'm chewing like a jerky texture, but it tastes like I'm eating good If I could pepperoni. imagine what it would taste like, I would think like carrot, a carrot, probably. <laughs> As we take a look at this front nine, Simon Lazat, six under on the front. We've got Emerson Keith. At six under as well, Matt Orem, as we alluded to earlier, that five under eventually turns into 11. Spoiler alert. But uh, good scores in the front nine. Yeah. And we've got nine more holes the first round yeah, coming these, right up. These guys aren't really on pace on that. They really need to pick it up on this back nine. We yep. see a bunch of fives, a bunch of sixes. Come on back. Let's see if they can scorch that back nine. Thank you.